Customer Portal, Permit Application. Within your Customer Portal account, you can apply for a permit from the dashboard by clicking Apply for a Permit. Before you apply for a permit, you should be confident you know the permit type, requirements, and documents required for the application. The first step in applying for a permit on the Customer Portal is to identify the type of permit required. Within the application, you will encounter instructional text. These notes, guidelines, and instructions are intended to help you understand what is expected at each step. Instructional text is limited and does not replace the wealth of information on the website and in the permit guides that may support you in your application. All permit applications begin with asking about the type of work. This is a critical piece of information for the permit application. For more information about types of work, visit the website for detailed explanations and definitions. The type of work is found in a pull-down menu and must be consistent with the permit type selected. To aid in selecting the proper type of work for all permits, excluding water and building permits, prefixes have been added identifying the permit type. For example, DEC references decks, FEN references fences, ROWD references right-of-way permits development, SWI references swimming pool installation, and so on. All questions within the application form are linked to built-in business rules which inform holds, fees, requirements, reviews, and inspections. If you are also registered as a contractor, you must indicate if you are applying for a permit as an individual or as a contractor. Many of our business rules are triggered by location according to information in our GIS database. When completing the application, you will be asked to supply the location of the work. Addresses must be selected from the database to ensure the business rules can be applied. This is a simple search function. Enter the number and street name of the address in the search field. Click Search and select the appropriate address from the pop-up window results. Do not enter street, road, way, avenue, etc. The specific location box allows you to provide additional site-specific information about where the work will occur on the site. This is not a required field. The Owner Tenant section is a required field. The Owner Tenant section is intended to capture information about the actual owner of the property or the person living at the address. This is especially important if you are applying for a permit as a contractor. Remember, all questions in the application are linked to business rules. Questions at this stage are permit specific. In this example, the number of decks triggers a business rule that could impact the reviewer and inspector requirements. The questions about retaining wall and grade contour could result in the requirement of additional permits and the contract value is used to calculate the permitting fees. In this example, we have selected Yes, which will require a grade alteration permit. You must upload all documents required for your application. The application lists all required documents and outlines what information is required for each type of document. There are samples available for many document types to assist you in preparing your application. A naming convention has been created to make uploading documents more efficient and remove the need for manually selecting the document type for each upload. All documents must be provided as part of the application submission. The Contractor screen in the application is a required field for contractor applicants and an optional field for homeowner applicants. As a homeowner, you can choose to provide contractor information if you have hired one to do the work outlined in the permit. 
the contractor must already be in the system to be selected. If you are applying for the permit as a contractor, the contractor information section is a required field and must be completed. Selecting Add Contractors opens a search window. Type all or part of the name of the contractor and the search will return results. Select the appropriate contractor from the list. Contractors must have a registered contractor profile in order to be added to the permit. If they are not registered, they will not be identified in the contractor search. Homeowners cannot create contractor profiles for contractors they have hired to do work. If there are multiple contractors doing the permit work, one contractor must be selected as the prime or lead. The final application screen asks you to confirm the contact information as the applicant. The permit application is complete. Selecting the Next button will take you to the application summary page. At the end of the application, the fees are summarized and an attestation that the information is true and complete must be signed. At the bottom of the summary, in red text, additional permits required will be identified. These additional permits will create holds in the initial permit application. In this example, our permit application will require a grade alteration permit because we selected yes when asked if we would be altering the grade or building a retaining wall. You can choose to save the application as a draft or pay the fees online using a credit card and submit the application. In some instances, you may choose to pay in person, even though your application was created online. Saving the permit creates a draft application in the system and that will be located by staff. If paying in person, please bring your permit application number. Fees can be paid by credit card online. Once paid, the Transaction Complete screen serves as an e-receipt. A copy will also be sent to the indicated email address. Clicking the Back to Store button opens the confirmation page and indicates the status of the permit application has changed from Draft to Submitted. From this page, a link will take you to the permit page in the dashboard. Alternatively, if you are finished with your permit activities, you can leave the customer portal by selecting Log Out. The permit page can be accessed at any time from your dashboard by going to My Activities and selecting the permit. This page opens and shows a summary of the permit, contains a copy of the document submitted, and indicates the current permit status within the application workflow. As the permit advances, different parts of the permit page will be enabled. For example, Request Inspection will be enabled when the permit is issued. After you request inspection, a record is created in the My Inspections tab of the dashboard.
As mentioned, the permit page can be accessed from the dashboard at any time. However, you can monitor permits without opening each permit page by looking at the application status in the My Activities tab. As the application advances through the stages, the status is automatically updated. If revisions are required, you will see the request here. You can click the link in the right-hand column for additional information. When the permit reaches Issued stage, request inspections will appear in the right-hand column of the My Activities tab. Once the request inspection has been submitted, the inspections can be tracked in the My Inspections tab. The Customer Portal application is structured as a series of questions. Each question informs business rules. If you are registered as a contractor, you can apply as an individual or as a contractor. You can also signal if there are other contractors who will be working under the permit. As a homeowner, you can identify and select a registered contractor if one has been hired to do the work. You have the option of saving the application and returning at a later date or submitting the application with online credit card payment. Detailed information about the required documents is found in the application to ensure submitted documents are complete, correct, and meet our standards. The dashboard allows you to monitor the application as it progresses through the process. All required tasks can be completed from your Customer Portal account.